Did you know that you can go gold for just one dollar? Who doesn't want to be a part of all these great deals? Hashtag not a sponsor. My name's Chase and welcome to Chase Talks. Let me close this. Can I close it? I can. <laughs> and um, welcome to another episode of Dynasty Warriors 8 Empire Mode. The Chase Talks Force is Conquest of China. So in the last episode we ended off with being invaded with a need to defend ourselves against the terrible, terrible Deep Orange Kingdom. But before we do that, I am going to go into info and, whoa, not system. Because um, I saved the last time. Uh, we're going to go to weapons. Ring blade, and I think we're going to change. Oh, I think that blade's way better. I don't yeah, this one looks way better, and it's still man mode. Got a cooler picture too. It says battle axe is one of its abilities. What does the battle axe ability do? Can I do a tribute info? Battle axe. Each time fifty enemies are defeated, the battle god's axe effect will occur. Huh? I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna pick it. Um, and then I can change my weapon too. And ooh, we got a nice general sword. Nice. What else do we got? We got the spiky shield. I think I want to use the spiky shield. Mm. See what else we get? This might be kind of cool to use too. But you know, I think I want to use the spiky shield, and it's a different attribute than my other one. Um, it also has swiftness and cyclone and frenzy, so it's got a couple different abilities than my other one. Um, I don't really know what any of them do, but right now what we need to focus on is defending our kingdom. So I'm going to go down to battle and I'm going to defend. The reason I'm going straight into it, even though I really wanted to heal this turn, was because if I don't and I heal, in that month I will lose my territory. So we're just going to have to fight with weakened forces. That's fine, the Chase Talks forces are too indomitable to lose even when weakened. Um, let's go Zhao Ren. And let's do bow and Shima Shi seemed like he worked pretty good last time. And hey, let's use Gan Ning again. Oh no, you know what? Let's use Zhao Zhao instead. They're all lieutenants. Let's use them. Since a lot of them are new recruits and using them will most likely increase their happiness maybe, I hope. But you never know. Let's see what happens. And we get through the loading screen of loadness. Let's see if we will be able to pick ourselves up our first win and only win most likely of the episode. Since these battles usually take so long that that's about all we can do in this episode. Maybe though since we're starting the battle so early I'll be able to get through this defense and we can at least do some other things like heal and stuff. I'm hoping that we don't defend from this invasion just to get invaded right again. Um... Cause that'd be pretty terrible. Wow, they got a lot of forces. Their forces are just barely weaker than our own. See battle state field objectives are maintain total troop strength, defeat specific officer three minutes or less, defeat officers four times, and capture base four times. All right, I think we can do that. I think we can do that. All right. It looks like we have quite the advantage here. Let's clean this mess up quickly. Capture the enemy main camp or subsequently weaken their forces. Subsequently weaken their forces. Man, a lot of their officers are over there. I'm going to go into this base, though. Capture this base. It seems like this ring sword is way better. And the majority of my officers are over here. I feel like I'm going to have to circle back around and fight off all those officers that are advancing. Oh, excuse me. I just ate dinner. I jerked Jackson. Hex that. 
Hashtag Jerk Delicioso. Jerk chicken is not a Spanish dish. I don't believe at least. Hey, I think I fought him before. This base is ours. All right, I'm gonna circle back around. And I'm gonna kill, there's an enemy officers over here and I'm gonna kill those enemy officers. Um, and stop them from taking over my base. Wow, this sword's like gold, it actually looks pretty cool. See, there's the enemy officer right there. Soon Quan is in trouble. Okay, we defeated this guy. Now we need to go help Soon Quan. I think we're gonna have to go all the way here. Standard base is fallen. We definitely gotta move over and help them out. Because they're taking over our bases. Over here, um, Lubu and Sunsei and Bo are moving through and they are taking their own bases. So, hopefully they'll be able to advance and take some bases on the other side. While I reclaim our bases over here and stop their forces from kind of obliterating mine. And if I help Soon Quan, I think he'll like me more. So I defeated that guy, that was pretty good. Oh, I'm helping Zhao Zhao. Oh, there's Sima Yi. I wonder if he's related to Sima Shi. Whoa, another lock. Double blade lock all the way across the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So intense. Will you continue and attempt to capture the enemy main camp? Yes. I think it's because I successfully um, defeated so enough of their forces to make them not want to advance on me. But I'm just going to do this because it gives me more chances to catch, capture officers, things like that. And kind of overall strengthen my forces. So we capture the base. I need to go help Soon Quan still though. And Lubu capture the base. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, I beat that guy. Oh, your bravery is an inspiration. Oh, your bravery is an I expected nothing less! You are a brilliant warrior! My inside voices for my teammates. Ugh! I can't fall in a place like this! Go from his excited voice, his angry voice, soon say is temporarily withdrawing due to him. Huh. I told you I would return. From his Chinese voice, that was kind of what I think his English voice would sound like. If they cast that his English voice based on his Chinese voice actor, I feel like that's what he I wonder if that's how they kind of, I wonder if they just like, how they determine English voice actors when it's already in English, and when it's already in a language, like, do they take that language's voice actor's voice into consideration to kind of cast them similarly? Or do they just be like, ah, oh, you know what, he, he read those lines the best, so I'm going to cast him. Like, the guy who plays Ichigo, which who I believe is the, re is the original Red Power Ranger, it's a lot of voice acting jobs um, in anime and stuff like that. And I wonder if like he gets them because like he's just that good of a voice actor. 
or because they just think he'd be like the best fit for that character or he's just like that good of a voice actor they want to continually cast him for lead roles or like some role like he's usually in like he's been in a lot of animes like there's a lot of animes where even as like smaller parts like i just recognize him his voice so i wonder if he gets cast because of like he reads the lines and he does that good or if he's just like that well known as a voice actor that people are like man i want him in my in my anime like when they like cast the when like shonen or i guess it's not shonen jump it's funimation when funimation casts since they do the majority of english animes when they cast their like the person that they want to speak as a translator do they just like pick him because they know he's that good or do they be like that because i know like some people get casted for roles like typecasted and stuff like that where they'll like call him up and be like yo i want you to be this voice actor by the way that lightning between me and lupu meant we could both use like if i hit mushu he would use it at the same time and we'd do a combo mushu um i know people get typecasted for roles and i'm assuming that that the same thing happens in voice actors is that they like man your voice would be perfect for this character because you like this character is like the same as other characters you play you've played before and I'd assume that happens I'd be amazed if it wasn't true and that wasn't the way that they cast the people that it was all like blind and stuff like that um I actually watched some interviews with Mark Hamill where they were talking about him it was like actually like Last Jedi interviews um since The Last Jedi just came out recently but rather than since they weren't allowed to talk to him about The Last Jedi they had to talk to him about like other things since like the Jedi like talking about the last jedi was just because they kept everything so hush hush so he wasn't allowed to say anything about the movie clearly because they didn't want to spoil it um mostly for fans like what if mark hamill had spoiled anything that happened in that movie you'd just be absolutely hated by fans like they'd be like oh my god i can't believe you ruined the movie for me you're a terrible person um and i get that like i i've i avoided spoilers until i saw the movie um because i didn't see the movie when it came out because i didn't want to see like i didn't and i haven't even posted a review of it yet um well, I actually might have posted a review for it by the time this goes up. Um, but as of recording this, I hadn't recorded a review yet. I mean, I'm kind of waiting to make the review because I've been listening to what other people say about it, the movie. And I've been kind of getting other opinions and kind of seeing other people's take on it. Um, and I kind of know what I want to say, but I kind of want to hear what other people say first. Uh, and also, I just don't want my review to just sound like, like 100 other reviews that exist on the internet. So if people have, like, talked, like, I don't like this, and, like, a hundred people have said they don't like that, then I'm not, I don't want to talk about that part. I might, like, mention it, um, but, like, if every review you click on says the exact same thing about a movie, that kind of, I feel like, takes away substance to the review, where it's like, oh, man, this movie had this shitty part in it, and if everyone thinks that part was bad, then it's like, okay, cool, whatever, that part was bad. Um, it doesn't really add substance to your review because ten other people on the Internet said the same thing. Um... So I've been kind of waiting to do my review on it and kind of listening to other people's reviews and other people's takes on it. Um, but I didn't see the movie when it came out. I don't like going to crowded movie theaters. Um, yeah, I just don't really, I just don't enjoy going to a crowded movie theater. It's just not a good experience for me. Um... I think it definitely takes away from my movie experience when the theater is super crowded. To recuperate. Um. But oh, what was I? Oh, I was talking about voice actors. The um. So I watched Mark Hamill. I watched an interview with Mark Hamill. Where he's talking about his interviews for like the Joker, and since he's been like every like animated Joker since uh. If not the late 90s, the 2000, the early 2000s, like he's been the Joker's, like you can IMDb it, he has been the Joker's for a long time, and he was in an interview and he was talking about um, being a Joker and being an interview, and like the first time interviewing for the Joker, how he kind of felt crazy practicing in the car and stuff, and he's like, I'm glad that no one could see me practicing in the car, because um, he's like, I would have been afraid of me. <laughs> um, but uh, so it's just like things like that, and I know that actors have said that uh, for movies. That they have said, um, that they've, like, casted with, like, that they are, like, British actors who have casted with their, who have, like, done casting calls with their, um, uh, British accents, and then they, the people haven't liked it, and they weren't really feeling the act either. 
and then they redid the act, um, or they redid the um, audition with an American accent, and they felt like it fit the character much better, and they liked it much better. So I get like there's like those kind of takes two on it. So I wonder how much of that comes into play in voice acting, and I would actually feel like mo that comes into voice. That probably comes into play more often in voice acting, because they probably have like I'm sure you have like characters too that when you write a story, you're like this character is like speaks with a western accent this character speaks with an english accent this character speaks with an american accent this character speaks with a russian um with a russian accent like i'm sure that they already have that in their mind when they're making the character and of course that has to come an aspect on what they're drawing too and one that's like if it's an animated character they're like let me look at this character and let me hear the voice with this character's face do i feel this character fit this voice fits this character um, and I would feel that's how I would like to, I should probably look it up more before talking about it and see how it goes. But that's something that interests me and it makes me actually want to kind of look up more to it. It's kind of a cool concept to think about. Um, man, they've taken over some like weird bases in the middle. I, and I'm at their like main base. They're just giving me their main base. I'm going to kill this archer tower. Spot tower. Man, spot towers take forever to kill. But yeah, so I'd be interested on in that. I know that there's like some people with like YouTubers and stuff that try to become voice actors and things like that. See, that takes away a lot of units if you destroy that, but the spot tower takes a while to destroy. Um, they've tried to become voice actors, and then I know like there's people like like uh, Aaron Hansen or Eagle Raptor on Game Grumps who has been a voice actor on different TV shows and stuff like that um, and wants to actually more aggressively pursue a voice acting career. So, I don't know. That's just something that's been interesting to me is like the dynamics and what goes into that. And we've won. We capture the main camp. The Chase Talks forces have successfully defeated whoever. The Chase Talks forces have won. Victory! Woo! Run in circles, run in circles, victory, victory, run in circles, run in circles, victory, victory. Also, I feel like my voice has been kind of quiet in some episodes, so I'm trying to talk louder when I record now. I don't know if it's helping or not, because I know sometimes I get like into the gameplay and I just don't talk as loud or I need to project louder. Ooh, I'm going to try and recruit him. Ooh, he wants me to recruit him. Cow tie? Sorry, but that's not going to happen. Alright, I'll release you. I won't execute you like I accidentally did that one guy. Um, okay, so no territory changes happened. And there's actually like two other things in the map that happened at the same time. Nobody fought. So we're going to loading screen. Uh, we're, what, 18 minutes into this episode. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to cut it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do like a group healing really quick. Um... Just before I forget, oh, we leveled up. That's nice. Uh, there are kingdoms invading across. Um, so the bottom of the orange kingdom is getting attacked. Oh, man. We increased happiness in months places, but we didn't build an academy. But I did recruit an officer. I guess recruiting the officers only counts if I spend resources. Dang, that sucks. Um, so my war council has begun. Um, is that Zaza on the front of my war council? That's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to go personnel one. Finance is one and diplomacy one. I suppose we'll go with this plan for the time being. Oh man, being ruler is so hard. I suppose we'll do this. Um, I will. Um, try and build an academy again. Um, I'll try and recruit officer again, and I don't know what scout officers from one other kingdom means, but we'll do that. We're not getting attacked right now, so that means I am safe to, um, go to personnel and, oh, not personnel, it's a military. Go to military, do group, what's ultimate training? Oh, I'm going to go to group healing. Um... So I can heal a bunch of 
All the officers in your kingdom have recovered from their exhaustion. So. That way. I had something I'd like to suggest. Would you support? Oh, hey, Sunsei wants to become sworn siblings. So you know what? This is actually the first thing I'll do in next time's episode is I'll become sworn siblings with Sunsei. Because um, I think that's really cool. I definitely want to become sworn siblings with Sunsei. So... For now, thanks for watching. Remember to rate the video, comment the video, and subscribe so you never miss another episode of Chase Talks. Until next time, this is Chase, signing off.